fall. Unity is an incredible conversation now in our society because guess what? <laughs> in the society, our, especially specifically to the United States, we are divided uh, left, right. Uh, we are divided in our politics. We are divided in our in our choices uh, on on people, and we are divided. People are dividing themselves from each other, basis of color. And uh, uh, we know that unity is a powerful, powerful thing. When people get together, uh, things happen. No matter. Uh, no matter how difficult it may be, a united heart and united mind is a needed thing. We need to come together. We need to come together. The Bible tells us uh, two can't walk together unless they agree. I can't continue walking with you a path if you and I can't agree. If you and I can't see eye to eye, if you and I can't find some commonality, some common ground, you and I are doomed to suffer separation uh, sooner or later, depending on the tolerances that we have, depending on the perseverance and the patience that we may possess in our heart and mind. But we think that this is something that we're all asking for. We think that, that unity is something that we as humans and we as uh, countrymen and we as people ask for uh, but in reality unity is a god thing god calls us to come together um, because of uh, his desire for us to live in harmony we cannot live in peace we cannot live in in harmony we cannot live in in balance of one another if we cannot be united uh, incredible our country is called the united states but uh from what you're seeing on the news uh it's more of the fractured state the divided states of america um amen and we just can't seem to find common ground but i think if we would if you and i would look at ourselves and understand that the the greatness of anything starts with its smallest part, right? Like the, the 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 chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Right? If the if the chain has a weak link, then it's not it's not strong. So it's the small part. You think about even the virus, even the COVID virus. They're just looking to have a small the anti the antivirus the, the the anti the medication from from what I gather from reading up and and from uh, from talking to uh, actually a scientist a biologist or microbiologist that that is working for the FDA <clears throat> he and I'll, I'm gonna have him on actually on my broadcast uh, on one of my lives and talking about um, you know. Uh, immunity and all those other things but he actually was saying that the 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 engineers the the um, drug engineers the, the 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 pharmacists the scientists that are trying to make a, a an antiviral drug is just looking for a small piece to to fit chemically where the virus would normally fit and when that thing is displaced by the the the, uh, the the like 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 a puzzle, if instead of instead of the virus attaching itself to that vi to that puzzle, the the medication attaches itself, the virus then falls apart. It's the small stuff. It's in the small things uh, that we find the destruction of 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 our marriages. And the unity of our marriage can can fall with just a small thing, and so it's in the small things that we can be united. And and uh, oh, my dad is online. God bless you, pops. All right. Um, we find that it's the small stuff, right? <clears throat> Jesus said, "Oh, it, no, the, the 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 proverb writer Solomon said." 
It's the fly. It's the small fly in a perfume. If it's a small fly in the perfume that ruins the whole perfume. It's just one small dead fly that ruins the whole perfume. Paul the Apostle says, it's the little yeast that makes the whole dough rise. It's the little yeast that makes the whole dough rise. It's the little leaven in the King James Version that leavens the, uh, the, the dough. It's the whole entire, it's just a small thing. And so what? how am I applying that to, to unity? Because if we're looking at our country, if we're looking at the bigger picture, it takes but a small, it just begins with people just uniting together. And again, we thinking that this is a political thing. We think that, oh, they want us to be united. Our, 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 um, our lawmakers want us to be united. Um, our, our, our um, community organizers want us to be united. But unity is a God thing. Amen. Somebody say unity is a God thing. Unmute yourself and, and, and say unity is a God thing. Yes, thank you, Brother Greg. Unity is a God thing. Yes, the Fargus family, God bless you. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 2 is the recording uh, of the day that the Holy Spirit poured out himself and the Spirit of Christ indwelt the children of God, the disciples of Jesus, about 120 of them. Okay. Jesus had promised them that he was going to pour out his spirit, all right? He was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Uh, that's what Joel prophesied. And so this has been a prophecy for a long time, for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. And finally, here in the book of Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit now pours out on the day of Pentecost. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago on Pentecost Sunday. On the day of Pentecost, Spirit of God fell down and it filled the room where they were sitting. One of the key things that we find in the book of Acts chapter 2 is, uh, is verse 1. The Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they, that's the apostles and disciples, were all with one accord and in one place. These guys were in one mind. They were there for a specific reason. They were there and their heart and their mind were together. Praise God. And, and, and they wanted to be there because Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem until the power of the Spirit from on high comes to you. Wait there until you be endued, the King James Version says, with power from on high. And so the disciples were waiting on God for this power to fall on them. So they were all together. Their minds were together. Their hearts were sealed together. They were knitted together. And because of that togetherness, the Holy Spirit fell or poured itself out or was, was, was sent down from heaven to fill the house or those that were sitting in that room that day. Filled it. And the Holy Spirit moved in such a way we understand it. The Holy Spirit moved, cloven tongues of fire, sat on each of their heads, and then they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the ability. But the core thing is they were there together. Somebody say together. Amen. And you are thinking that, hey, you know, I, <clears throat> you and I, or if you're talking to your wife, or you're talking to your family, if you're talking to your husband, you're talking to your children, you're saying, we got to be together, we got to be united. And you think that this is just a good idea, but this is not just a good idea. This is a God idea. Somebody shout, unity is a God idea. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Unity is a God idea. So we 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 are here today in such a di the, the, you know a, a diluted a diluted nation uh, separated into factions um, with Antifa and 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 Black Lives Matter and pro police people and 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 uh, pro Trump and and pro Democrat and all of these things and we can't seem. To come together. And if you notice, it's 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 very tense in the air because of this disunity. And the calling of unity is a calling of God. And certainly in the church, and certainly more so in the small, smallest 
um, a smallish um, uh, factor of, of, of our country, of any country, and the family. The family needs to be united. We need to be together. Husband and wives need to be together. It's not just a good idea. It's a God idea. I want to take a look all the way from the book of Genesis, like we were reading earlier. All right, the book of Genesis, chapter 11. The Bible says, and the whole earth, verse 1, was of one language. Okay, one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found the plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime that they uh, they from order. And they said, Go, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. You know what they were doing, right? It is just, it, it is just, or maybe years, maybe a couple of years, I don't know the, the, the span of time here, maybe hundreds of years or so from, from uh, Noah's flood, from the, the flood, okay? And so now the people were gathered together and they're like, let's come together. They had one language, the Bible says, and they had one speech. They said, let's come together and let's build this tower. And let's build it towards heaven so, and we'll make a name for ourselves so we don't be scattered so that if God would flood the earth, we'd flood the earth, we would be saved. And they were looking to save themselves, right? And the Bible tells us here, verse um, verse 5, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this is, this is the great thing here. This they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Why is unity a God thing? Okay, and I know, we know, we find out that God breaks them up here. God sends a different language to them, and they all break apart. And people began to like speak in different dialects and began to speak in different languages. And the people that are building this city, building this tower can't communicate. They don't know which one is which. And they, they had no idea yet how to like communicate verbal up uh, by, by si signage and, and by sign language or by whatever it is. They, they just woke up one day and a portion, of the, a portion of the population was speaking one language. Another portion was speaking another language. And another portion was speaking another language. And they had to go find who was speaking what. And they had to get together. Together. And finally, the earth was so, and the people were displaced, and everybody went their own way, and they stopped building this tower because God, um, because God saw that they were trying to save themselves, and they were trying to imagine anything that they wanted against God. So they were building this to kind of be as an affront to God, right? Uh, so God said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, put 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 an end to this and change their language." So. One of the things, the reason why unity is a God thing is because anything can be done when people are together. Right? Anything is possible when people come together. Baba says in verse 6, it says here, Now nothing will be restrained from them, which they had imagined to do. Right? <clears throat> nothing was going to be, be impossible for them. If they were together, they were ready to, 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 to show up God uh, by, by building this tower and, and, and tell God, you know what, you can't, you can't direct us, you can't control us. And God said, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break up your languages. All right, so when we read this, we get a, um, we, we get a teaching that comes out of it. And you could, you could kind of feel the teaching, you kind of hear what God is trying to say, right? The first thing is, in order for us to have unity, all right, first thing you have to have in unity is a common language. Okay, first thing to have in unity, if you are taking notes, um, to, to have a united family, to have a united church, to have a united community, everybody has got to speak the same thing. When the, when, when the people here in, in Shinar built the tower or were building the tower, they had one language. God took off that unity of language, right? Made them talk in different things. But check it. In Acts 2, when God poured out His Spirit, guess what happened? 
the people that were of different languages received what? A new language. That was the language of the Spirit. That's the reason why God poured out His Spirit. And you wonder, why is speaking in tongues something that God wanted to do? How come, you know, if it's a supernatural, well, how come speaking in tongues is, is an evidence of the Spirit of God, is an evidence of the indwelling Spirit of God? How come? Because speaking in tongues caused the apostles to speak the language of of heaven they all spoke in one language okay here in the book of genesis chapter 11 the people of babel stopped speaking one language when they had one language they were able to do everything together or anything together god said and in the book of acts chapter 2 god brings back the unity of language but this time it was not a unity of language by mere people's language. It was a united language by His Spirit. His Spirit united them. His Spirit brought them together. The Holy Spirit caused them to be together. All right? In fact, the Bible tells us in, in, in Corinthians. Okay? In Corinthians chapter 12. All right? Verse 13, the Bible says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. It's the Spirit of God that now causes us to look at uh, Greg, who's Cuban, right? And Wilma, all right, who is Puerto Rican, right? And me, who's Filipino. And, and Sister Vivian, who is um, Ghanaian, right? No, she's not from Ghana, Guyan, uh, Guyanese, right? We look at that and we're like, how are these people going to come together? By the outpouring of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God causes us to speak in one language. The language of the Spirit. The language of heaven. The language. So first things first. When you are looking to unify, and this is a God thing, we have to learn how to speak the language of the Spirit. And you have to look at what God is trying to say. We have to look at what God is trying to do. Part of the reason why before before uh, Paul, Paul the Apostle, he had several companions, right? He had Mark, he had Luke as a companion. But before he had those cats, he had Bar Barnabas was his companion. Barnabas and, and him were, were together in the ministry. And they were called to do God's work, and Paul was leading that ministry. Barnabas was with him. But... Barnabas thought to do something else. And Paul thought to do something else. You know what they wanted to do? They just wanted to see who was going to be with what. Who are we taking as another companion? And, and uh, Barnabas says, oh, I'm going to take Mark. And, Luke said, uh, and, and Paul said, I'm going to take Luke. And their, 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 their vision of the ministry was so different. Their idea of where to go and how to approach the ministry was so different that they stopped working together. Could you imagine that? And what happens? We find Paul the Apostle, obviously, continues into the New Testament. And Barnabas? Well, there's just a mention of him in the book of Acts. We just know him because his name was mentioned once or twice in the book of Acts. You know, and so, obviously, we, we, we come to find out that your choices matter when it comes to where God has for you, okay? What God has for you. You have to choose and you have to pray and to seek God's face. You have to follow the anointed of God. I don't know how Barnabas get to, got to know uh, Paul. He probably was in one of his ministry journeys and, and they gathered together and they said, let's go together, what have you. Paul said, we're going to go this way. And Barnabas says, well, I don't like that idea. I'm going this way. And that's how they split. So, one language is so important, church. You can't be talking about something different while I'm talking about something else, right? So, we've got to be together in the home. Unity is a God thing. God don't want you and your wife quarreling. God don't want you and your, 
your family broken up. And so you have to come together and speak on the same terms. Now, bless God, thank the Lord that most of the world speaks English. So we don't have an issue of language. You know, of course, if we go to some place that have never um, heard English or, or, or have never uh, um, a country that uh, does not teach the language, then obviously we'll have a hard time trying to figure out where to go, what to do, how to get there, how, how to do the thing that we want to do because the language barrier. Okay. And so that, that splits up, but, uh, uh, being together now, because we're all speaking the same language of man. Being together now, now we just have to think of what? We have to now consider the, the, the concept and the thoughts that we have. Amen. Because unity is not just my thing. Unity is not just mom's thing. Unity is not just father's thing. Unity is a God thing. God delights in unity. God has powered unity, the spirit, the character of unity so much that you can do anything when you are united. Matthew, right? We were reading the book of Matthew. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, uh, verse 18 first, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth, okay, shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again, again I say unto you that in, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in his name, there I am in the midst of them. Right? Think about that. Where two or three would touch, where two or three would be gathered together in his name. Okay, so the second thing for a child of God, so first you have to talk language, right? The second thing that, that God desires in unity is gathering together in His name. That's for the child of God, right? A gathering together in His name. But what we find is if we apply it to our everyday life, if we apply it to people, we find that gathering together in a goal or in a particular name is powerful, right? Right? That's what we know. But we know that where two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus, he shows up. If you and I are gathered here together, and let's say we're doing worship, and you're thinking, you're looking at you're looking at me as, as I lead worship, or you're looking at somebody else as they lead worship, and you're gathered there to watch a performance or to see somebody or just to sing, you're not there necessarily to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Then 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 the, the unity is is broken, right? But when when we are together in the name of Jesus, Jesus shows up, right? If you and I are gathered together on Sunday morning, right? And you say, okay, it's about to be 1030. And I know we're not, we're not here in physical, physical gathering, but I'm going to gather together. I'm going to put my mind together. I'm going to put my family together. I'm going to put my, my Bible. I'm going to get it ready. I'm going to get myself ready and, 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 and put my mind and focus my mind so I could be together with pastor as he shares the word of God. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to lean in. I'm, I'm going to study God's word. I'm going to hear, I'm going to listen. I'm going to make notes. I'm going, I'm, I'm going, we're going to do this in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God will show up. And you know what happens when God shows up? You know what happens when God shows up? The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where Jesus is, the captives are set free. Where Jesus is, anything is possible. Jesus said it is in his word. If anything, we, if, if two of you or three of you would touch and agree, if you want to do anything, it shall be done to you. That's the power of unity. God is calling the church to unite together to do a great work for God. And I'm telling you right now, in the midst of all this chaos, in the midst of the protesting, in the midst of the COVID-19, in the midst of people dying and lives getting lost uh, by either violence or by virus, right? Well, that's crazy, right? Uh, and, 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 and finances are getting lost because of, of, of isolation, right? Or, or jobs closing. Because of all this stuff, if the church would come together, if we would just hand in hand 
arm in arm, come together. God will do a new work in this world. God will manifest himself in this new world. I believe one of the reasons, or, or at least part of the reason why we don't see the activity of miraculous working of God in our common day, in our current day, is because the church is so disunited. The church is so disjointed. People are wanting to do their thing than trying to do a God thing. Now, it may not look like what you want it to look like. It may not even look like what I want it to look like. But if God is calling us for it, we've got to be united. Like I said, number one, we've got to speak the same thing, right? We all have the Spirit of God inside of us. So that's already a check mark, right? I've got the Spirit of God inside of me. I should be speaking the things of the Spirit. But a lot of times, human humanity, the things that we are speaking are coming out. And so what we have, we have to be united in the name of Jesus. How are we united in the name of Jesus? We've got to believe the same thing from the word of God. All right. That's it. We got to believe the same thing. If we can't be united by, by, by policies or by politics, we've got to be united by the presence of God and the power of God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, where two or three are gathered together, Jesus said to them, look, whatever, 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 whatever shall be bound on earth, uh, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And God has chosen men to put out his vision. God has chosen and anointed people to send out his vision. And we've got to rally together. Part of the reason why churches are falling apart is because they can't rally with their pastor. They can't rally with the vision of the church. They can't join up. They can't meet together. And they want to do this. And the deacons are against this. And the treasurers and the, all these different people are against each other. We're not going to go anywhere fighting each other. We are only going to go somewhere if God is in the midst of us and we are united together in his word. Somebody say amen. That's the reason why Bible study is important. You know why Bible study is important? Because it brings our minds together. We see together what God desires for us. Like, like I've, been, I've been teaching Bible study on, on Thursdays and from the book of Galatians chapter 6. If you're not there, you can't really connect with us because, well, you're not hearing what I'm teaching. And you don't know what God's word is bringing. And so you still have your own concept. You still have your own mind. But when we're studying the word of God together, when we are talking together and we are reading God's word together, amen, and we are walking together hand in hand, God begins to work a work in us and nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible to them that have God in the midst of them. The devils are shook when God's people are together. Praise the Lord. Um, the devil comes to divide. That's the reason, the reason why, you know, when you read the book of Genesis, you hear Satan say to, to Eve, did not God say? He wanted to cast doubt in her mind about what God said. It all started there, you know. It all started there. Is Eve leaning in to what the devil said? And the devil only said, did he really say that? Did God really say what you think he said? I'm not sure he said that. I don't think he said that. No, I don't think he said that. Right? And some of us say, well, I'm, 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 uh, you know, we have our own thoughts and we have our own opinions. We have our own concepts and we have all of this stuff. And some of us need to lay those down at the altar of sacrifice. We just have to lay it down for the sake of what? Somebody. For the sake of what? For the sake of unity. For the sake of oneness. Because this is not my idea. This is not, uh, you know, this is not Wilma's idea. This is not Jennifer's idea. Amen. This is what? This is God's idea. To unite together. To walk together. Right uh, in the Old Testament, it says, "How can how can two agree? How can people walk together unless they agree?" 
But we also find out in the book of Genesis that if anything is possible, anything is possible if people would agree. And we find out in the book of Acts chapter 2 that when the children of God, when the 120 were in the upper room waiting for the same thing, the Spirit of God bust into that room, poured out His Spirit. People began to speak in other tongues and the Spirit of God gave them utterance. I don't want to be skept uh, a skeptic, but I feel like we are far from seeing God do a mighty work here in, 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 in Staten Island, in New York, or across the world. You know why? Because we're so disunified. We can't. And why is that? Well, there are people that do that, that, that speak different things. And so I can't unite with somebody that's speaking different things. And so I'm just going to find my own facts. We're still in the Tower of Babel. A spiritual Tower of Babel. And this time it's not God that caused confusion. It's the spirit of man. Man wants to do his own thing. Instead of submitting to the word of God. Instead of submitting to a man of God. Instead of submitting to the ways of the word of God. We'd rather do our thing. Right? So, all of those things, all of those things have got to take, take place. But remember that this is, this is a God thing. Unity. So number one, we have to speak the same language. Number two, we, we have to do it in the name of Jesus. We have to come together in the name of Jesus. Right? Now, listen, your pastor, me, I, 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 um, I'm an apostolic, Pentecostal. I'm a tongue talker. I baptize in the name of Jesus. There are people that don't believe in some of the things I believe in. They know it. We know it. I come to pastoral meetings here in Staten Island, and they know I don't believe some of the doctrines that they believe. Okay? But you know what I do? I put that aside to what? To unite. Unfortunately, some of them can't do the same. They look at me and they're like, oh, I can't deal with him. So, those doctrinal differences are preventing us from doing a general and a communal work for the kingdom of God. Yeah? And a lot of the things that I believe in, amen, are deep down. They're obviously biblical. I wouldn't believe in them if they were not in the Bible. Amen? Some of them just, uh, they don't believe in, in the things I believe in. But the Bible tells us, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together, where? In what? In his name. I don't need to know everything you know. I don't need to know everything that you believe in. Are you gathered here for the name of Jesus? If you're gathered here for the name of Jesus, I'm for you. I'm with you. Let's go. Right? You know, some, some people um, in, the, in, in, in the book of Acts, or excuse me, Jesus' ministry, there were people that were casting out demons. All right? They were casting out demons. And the disciples came to Jesus and said, Look, 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 look. Look at those guys. They are casting out demons in your name, and they're not one of us. <laughs> ben, you thought that you, this unity was just a problem, our issue, right? It was an issue during, during the ministry of Jesus. The disciples were like, Yo, Jesus. Do you see that? Those people are casting out demons in your name and they're not part of us. They're not one of us. I've never seen them hang out in our, in our table. I, I, they don't, they, I don't know who those guys are. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, let them alone. They can't say nothing bad about me if they're using my name. Right? They can't say nothing bad about me if they're going in my name. You know, th there's a... <sighs> Obviously, we're not just going to throw out everything and be like, oh, that's what they believe because there's a separation between God and the world and things of that nature. But those of us that believe the same thing, we've got to come together. Right? We've got to come together. So speak the same thing. Be in the name of Jesus. Right? Amen? 
Because, because we've got to be connected to the source of the power of unity, and that is God, right? It says, verily I say to you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you bind will loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done to them. Are you kidding me? Did Jesus just say if two of you would come together and bind things together? Anything you shall ask, it shall be done. So what's happening? Why aren't things happening? Why aren't things going on? Because people are so selfish. People are so prideful. People want their own thing. People want their own thoughts. People want their own agenda. They want to run their own system. They want to be, they, they, they want their name like the Tower of Babel. Let's, they said to each other, let's build ourselves a name. Let's build ourselves a name. And so we're not lifting up the name of Jesus. We're lifting up a name. Isn't that what they said? Right? Look with me. See if I'm right. Genesis 11. Right? And they said, go to verse 4. Let us build up a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name. They're building their name. They ought to build their name. So they can't be united. That's the reason why God's not doing great work in the world right now. You know where, where miracles happen? In the third world countries. Sometimes I wonder why. And the only thought I could see is that the people have so much need in the third world countries. That their need binds them together. Right? They got no food. They got no health care. They have no, no, no fields to grow food. There's famine. And what happens? They're united. They just have to call on God because their need unites them together to call on God. But here in the States, in the, in the, more, in the more economically built up countries, I can make my own money. I don't need you. <laughs> I, can, I can watch, I can watch uh, another stream. I don't need to be here on this time. I can watch this later. I can, and so our time is so much more valuable to us, personal time. We can't set, set aside time, you know, we, we, to be together, to be united together, to be, you know, you think about this situation right here, us online. Can I, can I speak to you honestly? Us online here. Right? You don't even have to get in the car. You don't even have to get dressed. Right? Here's be behind the scene. Sister Jennifer was still in her pajamas when she led us in prayer. You don't even have to get dressed. And guess what? Sister Wilma, guess what? People still miss it. Right? It's the most convenient thing. You could be you could even plug it in while you're driving and just listen to it on audio. Be watching. I'm glad for those of you that sit up, actually get dressed like myself, and and we get ourselves ready. Praise God. That's I think that's the way it needs to be. Because yeah, we're online, but this is the name of Jesus. We're in the name of we're doing this for the name of Jesus. We're not doing this for the name of Pastor Jones. We're not trying to make him famous. Amen. Because if if you're trying to make me famous, you're doing a terrible job. <laughs> we're all doing a terrible job. Right? <laughs> we're doing a terrible job. Amen. We're, so we're doing this for the name of Jesus. And that even, I mean, think about that. If you, we're doing a terrible job trying to make Jesus famous, uh, trying to make Pastor Jones famous, we're doing a terrible job trying to lift up a standard for Jesus. Now, I don't, I want to make your heart heavy this morning. I was going to say, I don't want to make your heart heavy this morning. But I do because this is a God thing. This is not just a man made thing, this is a God thing. Like like justice, we talked about justice. It's a God thing. 
Like we have to lean in for justice, make sure that justice is being served, make sure the disenfranchised are looked upon, make sure those that don't have a voice be given a voice. We have to pray that God give them a voice, God protect them, you know, so forth and so on. I mean, another black man was killed, uh, being shot behind uh, on his back last Friday night in Atlanta. Right? So we have to pray. We Right now, all we can do is petition, all we can do is put, but we have to pray. God, please, God, please, please change our system. God, please do something here. Please, God, because justice is a God thing. Now we have to go to unity and unity is a God thing. We have to come here. We, our church, our people, our community of faith have to come together, right? To just be united together. Somebody say amen. Praise God. Some people some people are not even on the broadcast today. And it's to our shame. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want to make us our heart heavy because, because this is a God thing. God is calling us for unity. God's calling us for togetherness. Amen. And like I said, it's in the smallest thing. The weakest, the, 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 the strength of the chain is in, at its weakest link. Right? So... If we can't even get united, how can the world see change if the church itself can't get united? How can the community not can see change if the family is not united? So we've got to come together because unity is a God thing. This is not just a good idea. It's a God idea. Right? This is, uh, in my mind, I'm thinking people, you know, every time I preach, I kind of arguments come, come into my mind on what other people may say so that I could kind of speak to that argument, can speak to that thing. Well, what's going to happen, Pastor, if, if I don't have the time to do it? If I well, Unite us in prayer. Find some time together. Amen. Hallelujah. Be knit together in the heart. And yes, yes, you have to reschedule stuff. To be what? To be united. We have to pursue it. We have to chase it. It just doesn't happen, y'all. It just doesn't happen. Unity just does not happen. Like marriage, we have to work on it every day. It just does not. It does. It just doesn't happen. I'm mixing my grammar up, mixing my English up a little bit. It just doesn't happen. We have to pursue it. You, unity in your home, you have to pursue it. It just does not happen. It just doesn't fall off the sky. It's not like breathing. It's not natural. Unity, unity is, is God set it up so that we don't put it on a front to God. But yet he brought it back by, by the spirit of God. And so as spiritual people, as blood-bought people, as Holy Spirit-filled people, we should be the first examples of unity. Amen. Unity takes, takes humility. Before unity, there's humility. Before unity, there's, a let, there's sacrifice. Right? There's sacrifice. In order for me to be united, I have to sacrifice certain things. But if I sacrifice unity for myself, then my power is lost. That's, that's what's happening. Some of us are sacrificing unity because we want what? Individuality. Well, I want what I want. And so we're sacrificing power of God for preference of man. Think about that. We're losing our ability to get a hold of heaven because we can't give up our, our, our little pleasures here on earth. We are losing the power of heaven because we can't give up our pleasures here on earth. So we're trading what? We're trading temporal power for divine authority. And so what's happening? We can't cast out demons. We can't, he, he, people can't be healed. People are not getting healed. Things are not changing in our world, right? Part of the reason why I believe this, part of the reason why our world is falling apart in this unity 
is because of the lack of the church to be united. Now, obviously, there is now a group that's uniting. At least, at least like the, 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 the Black Lives Matter movement has begun to unite everybody. The, the cause of justice has united people. What a beautiful thing. And you know what's happening? Guess what's happening? Things are being changed. Things are changing. People are getting together, Brother Ben. People are getting together, and guess what's happening? Laws are changing. People's way of life is changing. I mean, this used to be just a black thing, right? Now, white people are leaning in. Brown people are leaning in. I, I'm Filipino, and I'm moved by all the injustice that's happening in the black community. And we are moved in. And the unity is causing the government to shift. And the unity is causing things to change in the micro level and in the, in the macro level as well, right? Because of unity. And when I talk to when I talk to the black leaders, that's all they've been trying to pursue. Let's get united. Let's get united. You, and let me let me share with you something, okay? And I'll I'll close with this. Moses was the called leader of God for the Israelites. Well, there were several people that didn't like that idea. Why should you be the only one to go up the mountain, Moses? Why should you be the one telling us what's up? God can also use us. Okay. Why is you? So Moses said, all right, let's, let's consecrate ourselves and let's see who God chooses. Let's see who God picks. And so they all stand and, and Moses had his staff and said, let's see who God chooses. Let's see your staff and my staff, whichever one, whichever one buds. Now staff, think about that. It's not on the ground, in the ground. It's not rooted. So how can it, it's dead wood. It said whoever's wood buds, whoever's dead staff, dead wood begins to blossom. That's who God called. And so obviously God was, Moses called by God and his staff budded, right? Miraculous. And you know what God did to those, the dissenters? The earth opened up and swallowed them all. And if I remember correctly, 3,000, their families, everybody just swallowed in. 3,000 to save what? The 3 million. God got rid of the dissenters to save the rest of the group. He was so much about unity that says, I can't have this thing festering in our, my midst. I can't, I can't go forward with these people, with a group of people talking against Moses. When a group of people are against my chosen vessel. I'm going to go and swallow them up. And they died, y'all. Is God doing that now? The grace of the grace of God through Jesus Christ doesn't that God doesn't do that that kind of that kind of answer. But you know what he does? He takes away power from the church. Takes away effectiveness. Right? Because people can't get united. Praise the Lord. Amen. And and the church right now, and we're not talking about the water's church. We're talking about the church in general. Our effect needs to come together. Could you imagine if like T.D. Jakes and, 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 and Stephen Furtick and Joel Osteen and all these guys just got together? Could you imagine that? Right, Brother Greg, Sister Claude, could you imagine? Stan, could you imagine what would happen? If those major heads of the church come together, I mean, they, they represent, oh, I don't know, maybe half a million people. All together, you know what I mean? People listening to them, so forth. There's no people that follow them online. I mean, if, if some, of the, some of them are being followed by two million people across the world, right? I don't know how many, like online. Uh, probably a few million people altogether. Imagine how many how many millions of people follow Joel Osteen. And if we come together, what power, what impact? But no, we have to build our own name. Unity. 
is not a good thing. It's a God thing. That's the way to go. That's the way to close it right now. Let's pray together. I'm, I'm going to pray. Yeah, we can pray for us. It's small of us. So it's easy for us to get united. I, mean, I say that and, and we're still having a hard time. <laughs> right? I was finding difficulty. Because sacrifice, that, that's the third part, right? We said, speak the same language. Be, be, be together in the name of Jesus. And thirdly, provide sacrifice. Sacrifice to be united. Amen? But it, it, I want to talk, I want to pray for the general church. Because I think the kingdom of God, the general church, the larger scope of the body of Christ, uh, we need to be together. You know, we're just a, we're just a sand in a, 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 a speck of sand in, in, in the kingdom of God across the world. Uh, so I'm, I want to pray for us, uh, for the church today. Would you mind doing that with me today? Let's come together. Father, we're praying Jesus for your church this morning. Oh God, we're praying for everybody. We're praying for the men of God who lead, um, these these great amount of people and i know that you're using men and uh because you're using men and women we have our own thoughts and we have our own ideas and we have our own dreams and aspirations and you place that in there but father if there's gonna if there's gonna be a change in our world that we're all praying for. We're praying for peace. We're praying for justice. We're praying for togetherness. Father, if we're, we're, if we're going to see that in our world, I believe that it, it will be through the unification of your church. Father, I know there's so many things that we debate about. Who you are, the Godhead, our understanding of you, and understanding of the Father and Holy Spirit, and however that works out, and 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 what to baptize, and if we should baptize, and how to do this, and 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 how to do that, and, and what does this mean, and what does that mean, and, and we just get in our own way, or maybe maybe I should say, we get in your way. Because you want to do something here on earth. You want to show your power here on earth. You want to move here on earth. You want to change lives. You want to, to, to shake up. You want to show your miracles. You want to show your power. But God, in your word it declares, nothing, nothing shall be impossible if they're together. But if you separate them, if they're separated, then no good work will be done. No good work will be done if there is no unity. And so I pray, O oh Father, that we would look at unity not as a man's idea, not just a leader's idea, it, not just a good idea, but it is God, a God idea. It is your idea. And how we're going to get together? We're going to get together by your word. So help us to love your word. Help us to desire your word. Help us to study your word. Help us to be united in your word. So that we can be bound together. Not by the concepts of man. Not by the ideas. Not by uh, different goals. But by your word. I'm praying for your church this morning. I'm praying for all of us here on this video call. and Those online on Facebook. I'm praying for us to just join together in unity and we're going to give you praise and we're going to give you glory we're asking this all to be done oh god break our hearts lord for what breaks yours help us to desire it so much help us to desire your activity on earth help us to desire to see you manifest your miraculous work here on earth so much that our desire 
says to our minds and our hearts, okay, whatever I need to do, if I have to sacrifice, if I have to give, if I have to, if I have to say the things that maybe even I'm not comfortable saying, if I have to just to be united with brethren. Help me to choose unity over myself. Help me to choose your work over my wants. Help me to choose your name over my needs. Help me to choose your church over my concerns. Father, because we want to see heaven manifest on earth. You said if you would bind something together here on earth, it will be bound in heaven. So this morning, I'm praying, oh God, for unity among us because we want to declare your name here on earth. We want to see you move in a miraculous way here on earth. God, give us your grace to come together and be united. We're going to give you praise. We're going to give you glory. In Jesus' name.